Hello guys, what's up? It's William Macchio here today, and I have a special guest, uh, Robert Coronado, and we're going to be basically talking about his story and how he came to be the player he is today. So I'm going to head off and he's going to take over and talk to you guys about his story. So I hope you guys really do enjoy this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'm going to catch up with you guys later. Robert Coronado. Um, I'm a defender for RGB EFC Toros. Um, today I'll be talking to you about my journey, my soccer career, and what I've done and what I've been through to get to where I'm at today. When I was four years old, uh, my dad put me in AYSO, uh, soccer recreational, recreational soccer, and I started playing there for about four years. Um, he was my coach as well as my uncle. They were both my coaches uh, throughout my whole career at AYSO. And then it started getting a little bit more competitive. When I got to eight years old, uh, I started moving into club so soccer, uh, Mexican league soccer, and um, at the time I was I lived in the city of La Habra, California and I've been living there my whole life up until I came over here to RGB Toros so I grew up in a neighborhood of, with a bunch of Hispanic and Latino families so soccer was the primary sport in the little neighborhood we did have a, a little local park that all the kids would go to especially during the summers or even after class when we get home from school, we had to go play some soccer. So it kind of started off there and it started getting a little bit more competitive. Uh, my dad put me into a competitive soccer club at the age of eight. Uh, I started playing for a club team called Celtic in Pomona, California. And uh, I was not the best player, definitely not the best player. I was not getting much playing time. I was playing a year up at the time. So I it was a little tough for me to get some minutes in and just physically all these kids were bigger than me and it was just kind of hard for me to get some playing time and it was it was quite a bit of a drive for my my dad to, to get home from work take me to training and the fact that I wasn't playing getting minutes obviously as a parent you don't want uh, your kids to, play, to be on the bench if you're spending all this money and stuff so um, we had to take a step back um, went to um, Mexican League uh, started playing there with a bunch of my friends from La Habra where I grew up. We started a Mexican League team. We started playing games. We did really well. Um, our chemistry was great. So we were like, okay, let's try club soccer again. At the age of nine or 10, I moved to uh, the club soccer team uh, called Fullerton Rangers. That's where our Pumas team kind of all went for a tryout for uh, Fullerton Rangers and we ended up making the team. They actually made a team just for us. And at the time, club soccer, there was different levels. So you started at bronze, you went up to silver, then gold, then premier. So we started at the very, very, very bottom of bronze. And we slowly worked our way up each season. We kept moving up to silver and then we ended up getting to gold. And um, there was some problems with uh, financial issues with with the whole team so our team ended up breaking apart and at the time I was still playing a year up so when all this happened I did uh, stay at my age group so at U12 I was playing a year up so then our team broke apart and I stayed at that U12 because that's my regular age group there were a lot of kids better than me and I was not the best player as well so um, I did have to work my way up as well I was on the bench to start off uh, with the team. I had to work my way up with uh, getting some playing time. So uh, it was probably like a year that I was on the bench, just coming off the bench. I would get minutes, it wasn't enough, but so I still kept working, kept working. I would train 
almost every day. Uh, I wouldn't see it considered as training. I would see it as just always improving, just getting touches on the ball. I think the most important thing uh, in the youth development is just to stay on the ball, whether you're around the house or just at the park. And I think that's what helped me a lot when I would go to the park after class and just after school and just kick it with my friends, kick the ball, pass the ball around, just play World Cup, those all these little games that we play. So um, after that year of just training, I guess you can call it, I started getting more playing time. Uh, we ended up going to Dallas Cup in uh, Dallas, Texas, one of the biggest tournaments. And we ended up losing in the quarterfinals our first year. So it was very tough for us just to put all that money in, especially for our families, our parents, putting all that money, all that time in and to go lose in the quarterfinals. So we ended up going again the following year. At this point, I had a starting spot. I worked my way up. I was grinding through all the work and just dedicated myself just to getting better and making sure that I was a starter on the team. So we ended up going back to Dallas Cup the following year. Uh, we ended up playing uh, FC Dallas in the finals, the academy team, and we ended up beating them in PKs. Uh, so that was our, it was pretty cool to come back and win the tournament after we had just lost in the quarterfinal. And we went back for a third year as the returning champs. So all eyes were on us and ended up uh, doing really well in the tournament. We get to the finals against Frankfurt who had just won 16 to zero in like their first match. So we were a little bit nervous, didn't know what to expect, big German guys. And we ended up beating them 2-1. So we were back-to-back -back Dallas Cup champions. And that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments in my youth career with club soccer. And we also did win some regional championships and we got uh, two national championships in 2011 and 2012. I think I was a U14 and U15. So that was my club career. I ended up attending to Cal State Fullerton, um, a local college from where I live at. And it was a big decision for me just because um, I'm very family oriented. So I wanted to make sure that I was close to home at the same time while playing at a high level. And um, I was I was getting scouted at the time when I was with Fullerton Rangers and with our national championship, Dallas Cup, cha Dallas Cup championships, regional championships, it helped me get recruited. So that's how I got in there. And uh, to be exact, I lived 20 minutes from uh, Cal State Fullerton. So I was still living at home. There was no need for me to move out. I was still living in La Habra mm -hmm. with my family. And uh, my family has been like a very big support throughout all my career up until now. And they still support me, whether I'm 20 minutes away or 20 hours away. They're always calling me, supporting me, watching my games, traveling. So that's one of the big reasons um, I play this game is for my family. So now that I'm attending at Cal State Fullerton, I am also playing soccer there. And my freshman year, uh, like I said, I was, I was a nobody starting my freshman year. I had to work my way up, get playing time again. At the time there were 11 seniors and nine of them were starters. So it was pretty hard to get some playing time at the beginning, but um, throughout my first season, I was a, I came off the bench every game. And I think I started eight games that season as a freshman. So it was pretty tough and pretty cool just knowing that um, there was a lot of guys that were older than you and knowing that you could play with them. And it just kind of built, uh, built my confidence and moving forward. Um, my sophomore year, my second year in college, uh, I was a starter and that's where I, um, I got my position. Uh, I was a left mid at the time and also playing the center mid. So wherever they needed me, that's where I would play. And that's uh, a year that I'd say was a little bit more challenging just because different positions moving me around. And at the time I did think I was like, okay, I think I'm better at center mid. So I wouldn't really care about playing left mid, but uh, it really opened up my eyes and um, showed me that playing multiple positions really is helpful because at the end of the day, when you're look getting looked at between two players, this player only plays one position and this player plays multiple position, they're probably gonna choose a player that plays multiple positions just because um, they could use you in different positions, obviously. So um, after my sophomore year, um, I wasn't complaining. Uh, moving into my junior year, um, I ended up moving back 
uh, spot. So I, instead of left mid, I was playing left back. So the left back position was my first year and my junior year playing that position. So it was a little bit different. And uh, I told myself, you know, this is just, I'm just adding more positions to, you know, my, my game. So it's just helping me a lot. And it's making it easier for me to, to become pro in, in the future, obviously, just reading how other players move in different positions. So now that I'm a left back, I'm, I'm gonna be playing against right and left midfielders and stuff. So I used to be a left midfielder. So now I know what I'm, what they're probably thinking. So it's just kind of like a little game you play within uh, yourself and your opponent. So um, moving into my senior year, uh, this is probably one of the most difficult times in my college career. Um, in the off season, before my senior season, um, I was training on my own and I did get an injury. I broke my fifth metatarsal on the right foot and I had to get surgery. And it was very, very tough because I was one of the top players at the time for the league. So I was hopefully gonna get looked at from pro teams. And it was supposed to be the year that I that I really was going, I was doing well. I, I was just moving up. My game was, was moving up as well. So it was something that really kind of broke broke me a little bit, but at the same time, uh, the journey uh, that got me up until that point was the reason I kept going and kept going. I wasn't gonna let that injury just stop me from the, stop me there. So I was actually out for seven months. So they were very long months. So throughout those seven months, I was doing a lot of rehabbing, a lot of therapy, a lot of stretching, working out, and just focusing on yourself. You gotta think a little bit more about what you do, what you eat, and just take care more of it by yourself. And it kind of really opened my mind on how to see things differently off the field and when I was in the field. So I guess it's it kind of helped me out just learning-wise of what I could improve on when I come back and play the game again. So I ended up redshirting that year of medical redshirt, so I didn't lose a season. So I come back my fifth season uh, to finish it off. Um, my retro senior year and I was I guess under the radar I think everyone forgot about me in that season that I was hurt so uh, I kind of used that to just prove prove everyone that you know I'm back and I had a chip on my shoulder I've been waiting all these years to to or I've been waiting all these months to come back and just show what I'm about and um, throughout my preseason, I was super excited. I was playing left back. I had stuck to that position to just because I knew that position would help me out a lot and getting, I had a better opportunity moving up and playing at the next level at the left back position. So after finishing uh, preseason, I was, we were going into a regular season conference. Uh, we did really well. Uh, we ended up losing in the, in the Big West tournament, in our conference tournament. But throughout my whole college career, I ended up getting three Big West tournaments. So we made three NCAA, double, or NCAA appearances. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, we didn't do so well in the tournament, but it was a good experience. Um, those three championships could have been four, maybe five, you know, but obviously stuff happens and it's just a good learning experience. So then I started thinking about, okay, what's next and what's next in life? You know, I'm gonna get a college degree. What about the soccer life? Do I wanna continue? And I said, of course I wanna continue. You know what I mean? I've been doing this since I was four years old. So um, I decided to make a highlight video. I had never made a highlight video. I decided to make a highlight video and just start sending it out to my club coaches and college coaches and asking them for help and just getting getting the highlight video out there. And one day I get a call and it was from uh, one of my college coaches and he told me, hey, I I got a call from a friend who's a Houston Dynamo and he's working with the affiliate team, which is RGB Toros. And they liked your highlight video and they want you to come for preseason. And once I heard that, I was like, wow, like that, that's really cool. Like I didn't expect that to, to, to happen at the time. So that's when I started training again really hard. Um, by that time, my college season is already over. So I started training really hard again, getting ready for preseason. Um, I ended up coming to uh, Houston. We ended up doing preseason in Houston. This was in, this was two years ago. So la actually last year in January, 2019 of January, I come to Houston. Um, we do preseason with the Houston Dynamo and 
it was very different from college because you know college I would go to class then only have like an hour and a half of training then go back to class and now coming into transitioning into uh, the pro life I guess I was considered a tryout so it was either I make the team or I go back home and find another job so I told myself I'm gonna pack one bag and it's gonna be a lot of stuff so it's the stuff that I'm gonna use for the rest of the year so I told myself I'm gonna pack a big luggage and just make sure that I make the team because I'm not going back. And sure enough, we did two weeks of preseason, I think in Houston. And then we came back to RGB, finished up preseason uh, here. And I ended up, we ended up having uh, end of the preseason meetings to see who was gonna get cut and whatnot. And I ended up making the team. And the first thing I did was call my family, just let them know, hey, this is what's happening. This is, I'm just entering another chapter in my life. and. This is all this is all I've worked for and to become a professional soccer player and you know it's not over just know it's not over and we're just gonna keep grinding and it was pretty cool because um, my family was super happy the, they all started calling me sending me messages and that's that's what you always want you always want support and make and know that you have people behind you supporting you no matter what you do and so coming into my first season uh, at with the Toros it was a little different from college so one of the major differences uh, from college soccer and USL soccer is just the speed of play I would say just uh, there's a lot of talented college players and um, there's a lot of especially a lot of talented players in the USL. It just comes down to the little details, I think. Um, just dedicate yourself into what you can do best. Control what you what you can control. So, you know, if you need to work on your 1v1s, just start working on your 1v1s. You know, if I'm a defender, I shouldn't be, you know, worrying about uh, training and striking goals, scoring goals and stuff like that. I want to um, practice more on getting assists, you know, 1v1 defending. Um, covering ground, winning headers, winning duels. So just dedicate uh, your training to your position and stuff. Just the little details is what matters the most, watching other players, what they do, and just kind of get a feeling of what it's like to um, to play against faster players than you and just, just different environments. So my first season, uh, it was tough as well coming in. You know, winning a, a starting spot was was tough during the preseason. The first season, or uh, the first game of the season, came along, and I didn't know if I was going to start or not. Uh, coach puts out the starting lineup, and sure enough, I was on the starting lineup, and I was very emotional in a good way, nervous. Obviously, um, I always tell myself, you know, if I'm nervous, it's it's kind of good because that means that you care. So. It's not bad to have nerves and butterflies in your stomach. To this day, I still get butterflies before games sometimes and just take a deep breath and just say that you can do it and just know that uh, your teammates have your back. And sure enough, that first game, my teammates had my back. If I had a, if I made a mistake, they had my back. If they made a mistake, I had their back. So it worked out perfectly. And um, I ended up getting, I think, player of the game in my first game. I was just run I just remember running everywhere on the field and then boom I hear a whistle out of a sudden and I'm like what was that and I look at the scoreboard and it's already halftime I'm like wow um, that went by quick so I remember going into the locker room sitting down taking a deep breath and I was like wow this this is something this is something different I wasn't used to obviously I'm used to college soccer so this was something different and it was very exciting um, moving along forward throughout the whole season uh, I think I got about a little bit half or more than half of starts of the season. Uh, a lot of appearances my first year, so I'm really happy for that. And um, it was a very long season compared to college. College is almost probably three months of of just soccer. And uh, at the USL level now, it's from the end of January all the way to the end of October plus playoffs. So it was a very long season getting accustomed to that. Um, I did get a couple injuries throughout the season here and it did uh, affect me a little bit at the beginning just because I wasn't playing and other and gave other guys a chance to you know get ahead of you so you got to really take care of yourself your rehab your therapy I did everything what I was supposed to do and came back uh, you know even stronger uh, got my minutes back got my starting spot again and just 
kind of kept grinding through it and whether it was an injury and whether I was sick whether I was having a bad day um, I just knew that there was gonna be um, better times you know there's gonna be another day to fix it there's gonna be times where you have bad training sessions you know maybe tomorrow you're gonna have the best training session so just keep your head up making sure that um, you're not putting yourself down no negative thoughts you know always making memories with your teammates because that's what's gonna be remembered forever you know the memories that you spend with your teammates and stuff like that so um, moving into my second season this year um, preseason was great uh, we got a lot of good competitive games in the preseason um, we unfortunately unfortunately we only got to play one game of the season and uh, due to the COVID stuff so uh, we've just been grinding to this day um, once they told us we couldn't train uh, a bunch of us, you know, just started working out on ourselves. The coaches sent us um, workout packets and stuff to do and just making sure that we're not letting hard times, you know, bring us down, especially like times like this, you know, make sure you're you're staying positive. You're making, making sure you're still doing things you need to do in order to get better, not just sitting around on your phone, playing video games, you know. There's going to be times for that, obviously, but making sure you dedicate yourself to uh uh, you know you what what you want to do what you want to be and just staying positive and always set goals for yourself just because uh, You got to know what your limits are and just exceed it and just keep going You know this this was my goal to become a professional soccer player now My question is what what else do I want? What do I want to accomplish now? Do I want to become the best defender of RGB Toro? Do I want to become the best defender of the league? So just keep setting goals for yourself. Don't ever get um, comfortable that's one thing I learned don't ever get comfortable with where you are because someone else is going to come and take your spot so hope you guys enjoyed my story and have a good day and take care bye